from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering machine learning everywhere. Build your ladder to AI. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to New York City as theCUBE continues our coverage here at IBM's Machine Learning Everywhere, Build Your Ladder to AI, along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls. We're now joined by Vitaly Sivan, who is Executive Vice President at AMC Networks. And Vitaly, thanks for joining us here this morning. Thank you for having me. I, I don't know how this interview is going to go, frankly, because we've got a diehard Yankee fan in our guest and a Red Sox fan who you know, bleeds Red Sox Nation. Can you guys get along for about 15 minutes? Maybe about 15. But I'm right. glad there's yeah. a bit of space between it's, us. It's oh. given us the off season and the Yankees are, have done so well. I'll, I'll be humble, okay? <laughs> we'll wait and see. All right. yeah. Just in case, I'm ready to jump in if, yeah. if we have to separate here. But no, it is good to have you with us this morning. Thanks for making the time. Um, let's just, first off, talk about AMC Networks a little bit. Um, uh, so five U.S. networks, you said, you know, multiple uh, international uh, networks and great presence there. But you've had to make this this transition, right, to becoming a uh, a data company, in essence. You have content, and you're making this merger in the data. And how's that gone for you? I mean, what and, and how have you done that? First of all, you are making me happy when you say that AMC Networks have made a transition to be a data company. So we haven't. We are using data to help our primary business, which is obviously broadcasting our content to our viewers. But yes, we use data to help to uh, tune our business uh, to follow the lead that viewers are giving us. Uh, as you can imagine, in the last uh, so many years, uh, uh, viewers, uh, viewers have actually dictating how they want to watch. Uh, whether it's streaming video rather than just turning their set-top boxes uh, or TV boxes on and uh, pretty much dictating what content they want to watch. So we have to follow, we have to uh, adjust and be at the cutting edge of our business. And this is where data come into play. So how'd you get there? You must have done a lot of testing, right? I mean, I remember when, you know, binge watching wasn't, didn't even exist and then all of a sudden now everybody, you know, drops, you know, 10 episodes at once. Um, was that a lot of A-B testing? Um, just analyzing data, how, how does a company like yours come to that realization? Or is it just, wow, the competition is doing it, we should too, explain. How, Interesting, how so when I speak to executives, I always tell them that business intelligence and data analytics uh, for any company is, uh, is almost like an iceberg. So you can actually see the top of it and you enjoy it very much, but there's so much underwater. So that's what you're referring to, mm -hmm. which is that in order to be able to deliver that premium thing that's, uh, that's the tip of the iceberg, is that we have to have state-of-the-art data management platforms, we have to curate our own first-party data, we have to acquire uh, meaningful third-party data, we have to mingle it all together, we have to employ optimization and predictive algorithms on top of that, we have to employ statistics and arm business with data-driven decisions, and then it all comes to fruition. Mm. Now, you're a company that's been around for a while, so you, you've got an application developer, you're a developer, you're an application development executive, so you've sort of made your personal journey. Um, I'm curious as to how the company made its journey. How did you close that, that gap between, say, you know, the, 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 the data platforms that we all know, you know the, the Googles, the Facebooks, et cetera, which are data is the central part of their organization to, to you know, where you used to be, which probably was building, you know, looking back, doing a lot of you know, business intelligence, decision support, and a lot of sort of asynchronous you know, activities. How did you get from there to where you are today? Makes sense. Um, so uh, I've been with AMC Networks for four years. Prior to that, I've been with Disney, ABC, ESPN for six years, mm -hmm. doing roughly the same thing. So uh, number one, we're utilizing uh, ever rapidly changing technologies to get us to the right place. Number two is uh, during those four years with AMC, we've, uh, um, we've employed various tactics. Um, some of them are called um, data democratization. Mm -hmm. So that's actually not only get the right, da the right data sources, not only process them correctly, but actually arm everyone in the company with immediate, easy access to this data. Because the entire business, data business, is all about insights. So the insights, and if you think of the business, if you for a minute separate business and uh, business intelligence, then business doesn't want to know 
too much about business intelligence. What they want, insights on the silver plate that will tell them what to do next. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the hardest thing you can imagine, right? And so the search and drive for those insights comes, has to come from every business person in the organization. Now, obviously, you don't expect them to build their own statistical algorithms and uh, see the results and employ even machine learning, but if you arm them with that data and their tip of their fingers, they, they'll make many better decisions on a daily basis, which means that they're actually coming up with their own small insights. So they're small insights, big insights, and they're all extremely valuable. A big part of that is cultural as well, on totally. that mindset. Many companies that, that I work with, their data is very siloed. I don't know if that was the case with, with your firm, maybe it was prior to you joining. I'd be curious as, as, to, as to how you sort of achieve that cultural mindset shift with people, because a lot of times people try to keep their own data. They don't want to share it. They want to keep it in a silo, gain political power. How did you address that? Absolutely. Uh, one of, uh, one of my uh, conversations with the president, uh, we were discussing the fact that if we were to go uh, make recordings of how people talk about data in the organization today and go back in time and show them what they would, will be doing three years from now, they would be shocked, they wouldn't believe that. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, so culturally, uh, educationally, uh, bringing everyone into the place where they can understand data, they can take advantage of data. It's uh, it's an undertaking, but you know we are successful in doing that. Well, help, help me out here. Maybe um, I just uh, am requiring a little translation here of some, or, or simplification. Um, so you think about you know, AMC, right? You have, you've got programming, you've got your lineup. I come on, I click, I go, I watch a movie and I enjoy it or watch my, t my, my program, whatever. So now uh, in this new world of viewer habits changing, my behaviors are changing. What are you? What have you done to? What have you looked for in terms of data and telling you about me that has now allowed you to modify your business and adapt to that? So I mean, how's data ch driving that on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of how I access your programming? So a good example to that would be something we called TV Everywhere. So uh, you said it yourself. Obviously, uh, users uh, or viewers have used to watching television as when the shows were provided via television. So uh, with new, new technologies, with streaming opportunities, today they want to watch when they want to watch and what they want to watch. So one of the ways we accommodate them with that is that beyond just uh, television, so we, uh, we, uh, we are on every available platform today and we are allowing viewers to watch our content on demand digitally when they want to watch it. So that is how we are, one of the ways how we are reacting to it. And so that puts us in a position uh, as, uh, as um, one of the uh, um, um, sort of B2C type of businesses where we're now speaking directly to our consumers, not via just the television, so we're broadcasting, they're watching, which means that we understand how they watch and we try to react accordingly to, to that. So which is something that uh, Netflix is bragging about as to that they know the patterns, they actually kind of promote their business, so we are in that business too. Uh, can you describe your sort of innovation formula, if you will? How do you go about I innovating? Obviously there's data, there's technology, um, presumably there's infrastructure that's, that scales, you have to be able to scale and, 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 and have you know, massive you know, sp speed and, and, and infrastructure that heals itself, all those other things, but what's your innovation formula? How would you describe it? So, uh, <coughs> formula is simple, it starts with business, when for, I'm fortunate that business has desire to innovate. So formulating uh, goals is something that drives us to respond to it. So we don't just walk around the thing and uh, look around and say, let's innovate. So we follow the goals, business goals for, of innovation. Uh, a good example is uh, uh, when we promote our shows. So um, the major portion of uh, our marketing campaigns falls on our own air. So we, um, we promote our shows uh, to our AMC viewers or uh, WeTV viewers. And um, uh, when we do that, uh, uh, we try to optimize our campaigns to the highest level possible to get the most ROI out of them. And so um, um, we've succeeded and we managed today to get about 30% ROI on that and either uh, just do better with our promotional campaigns or reallocate that time for other uh, businesses. 
I mean, you, yeah, you were you were uh, saying that the, um, after the first question, or during or, or responding to the first question about it, you saying, well, we're really not, you know, we're a content company still, but and and we're if we incorporated data, but you really are. Uh, Dave and I have talked about this a lot about, you know, everybody's a data company now in a, in a way sure. because you have to be uh, in order because you've got this hugely competitive landscape that you're operating in, right? In terms of getting more eyeballs, That's right. so. It's got to be no longer just a, a part of what you do uh, or a section of what you do. It's got to be embedded in what you do, mm -hmm. does it not? Oh, it absolutely is. Uh, <laughs> and um, um, I, I, I still think that it's uh, a bit premature to call uh, AMC Networks a data company, but to a degree, every company today is a data company. And um, uh, with the culture change over the years, uh, um, if I was, uh, so if I used to solicit um, um, uh, uh, requests and uh, and go about implementing them, today uh, it's more of a prioritization of work because uh, the company had, uh, and every department of the company got educated to the, to the degree that they all want to get better and they all want uh, those insights from the data, they want uh, uh, their, their parts of the business to be improved and we're venturing into, uh, into uh, new businesses and uh, it's quite a bit in demand. So is it your aspiration to become a data company or is it more a data-driven sort of TV network? How would you sort of view that? I'd like to say data-driven TV network, uh -huh. of course. Okay. It is more in tune with the reality. And, and so I, I want to talk about the, you know, aligning with the business goals. That's kind of your starting point. Uh, you were talking earlier about a gut feel. We were joking about baseball. Moneyball for business. So uh, you're a data person, so you, you know, the data doesn't lie, et cetera, but insights sometimes are hard. They don't just pop out. Um, is that true? Uh, do you see that changing? Is the time to insight to, from from insight to decision going to compress? What do you see there? So the, the 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 search for insights will never stop, right? And the more advanced we are in that journey, I guess the better we are going to be as a company. But um, uh, the data business is so much uh, depends on technologies. So that when technologies matures, so and we manage to employ them on a timely basis, so we just simply get better from that. So a good example is, is machine learning. So um, there are a ton of uh, optimizations, uh, optimization algorithms, uh, um, uh, forecasting algorithms that we put in place. Mm -hmm. So for a while, it was uh, a pinnacle of our deliveries. Um, now with mach machine learning maturing today, we are able or trying to um, to be in tune with the audience that is changing their behavior. So uh, the patterns that we would be looking for manually in the past, uh, would machine is now looking for those patterns. So that's the perfect example for us trying to catch up with the reality. Um, what I'm hoping for, and that's where the future is, is that one day um, uh, we won't be just uh, reacting, uh, utilizing machine learning to the changing change in patterns uh, in behavior. We are actually going to be ahead of those patterns and anticipate those changes to come and react. That's what I say. Yeah. What is the next step? Because uh, you said that you are you are reacting. I was ahead of your question. Yeah. Right. You were. <laughs> and, and so I'm going to go ahead and re-ask it. Data uh, guy. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, you've you've got to get to that next step of of not just anticipating but almost creating right in your way, creating new opportunities, creating use data uh, to develop these insights into uh, almost shaping. Yeah. viewer behavior, right? Totally. So, uh, like I said, optimization is one avenue that we pursue and continue to pursue. Um, uh, uh, forecasting is another, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm talking about uh, true predictability. I mean, something that goes beyond just to say how our show will do, even beyond, you know, so which show would do better. Yeah, can, um, can, yeah, can you do that? Yeah, I mean, even to the point to say that these are the elements that have been successful for this genre and for this size of audience and therefore as we develop programming you know whether it's in scripting casting whatever i mean take it all the way down to that micro level to developing almost these ideal these optimal programs that are going to be better received by your audience look this is not, not a big secret every uh, company that is in the content business is trying to get as many 
the Walking Dead as they can right. uh, on their portfolio? Uh, is it uh, is there a direct path to success? Uh, probably not. Otherwise, everyone would have been everyone super would do it. Yeah, right, been yeah. doing that. Right. But um, yeah, it's uh, those are the most uh, critical and difficult insights to get a hold of, and we're working toward that. Are you finding that your predictive capabilities um, are, are are getting? meaningfully better? I mean, how, maybe you could talk about that a little bit in terms of predicting those types of successes, or is it still a lot of trial and error? I'd like to say they are meaningfully better, but uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Um, I, um, look, we do, uh, there are obviously um, uh, interesting, interesting findings, uh, there are sometimes setbacks, uh, and we learn from it and we move forward. Okay, as good as the weather, or better, or worse? It de <laughs> depends on the morning and the, and the, and the, and the season. <laughs> how, Vitaly, how have your success, or have your success measurements changed as we enter this world of digital and, and machine learning and artificial intelligence, and, and if so, how? Well, they become more and more challenging and complex. Um, like, I gave an example of uh, data democratization. It was a, such a, such a uh, interesting and telling uh, company-wide initiative. And uh, at the time, it felt as a true achievement when everybody would get access to their data on their desktops and laptops. Uh, when we look back now a few years, uh, it was a walk in the park to achieve. Mm -hmm. So the more complex uh, um, uh, data and uh, objectives we set in front of ourselves, the more educated people in the company become, the more challenging uh, is to deliver and take to the next step, and we strive to do that. I want to ask you a question from a developer's perspective. You obviously understand the developer mindset. We were talking to Dinesh earlier. He's like, "Yeah, you know, it's really the data scientists that are that are that are you know loving the data, taking a bath in it, the data engineers, and so forth." And I was kind of pushing on that, saying, "Well, but eventually the developers are, have to be you know data oriented. Data is the new development kit." Um, what's your take? I mean, granted, the 10 million Java developers, most of them are not you know focused on the data per se. Mm -hmm. Is, is, will that change, is that changing? So, first of all, I want to uh, separate um, the classical IT that you just referred to, which, is the, which are developers. Just because this discipline has been well established, whether it's uh, Waterfall or Agile, so uh, every yeah. company has those departments and they serve companies well. Um, business intelligence is uh, a different animal. So most of the work, if not all of the work that we do, is more of an R&D type of work. It is impossible to say, uh, uh, in three months, I'll arrive with the model that will transform this business. So we're driving there. Yeah. Uh, that's the major distinction between the two. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, will um, is, uh, is, it, is it the right path for some of the data-oriented developers to move on from, let's say, IT disciplines and into BI disciplines? I would highly encourage that because the job is so much more challenging, so, so interesting, this very little routine, as we said, it's actually just challenge, challenge, mm. and challenge. Um, and uh, you know, as you uh, look at the news the way I do, and you see that uh, uh, data scientist becomes the, the number one desired job in America, I, believe, I hope that there'll be more and more people in that space because as every other department, we're struggling to find good people, right people for the space. Uh, and even within that space, uh, you have, as you mentioned, data engineers, you have uh, data scientists or statisticians, and uh, now it's maturing to the point that uh, um, you have um, uh, people who are above and beyond that, those who actually can envision models not to execute on them. Are, oh. you, are, you, are you investigating blockchain and playing around with that at all? Is there an Absolutely. application in your, in your business? It uh, hasn't matured fully yet in our hands, but we're looking into I it. Mean, the reason I ask is that it seems to me that it, you know, blockchain developers are data you know, oriented, and those two worlds, in my view, are coming together, but it, it's early days. Look, I mean, we are in R&D space, and like I said, we don't know exactly, we can commit, fully commit to a delivery, but it's always a balance between being practical and dreaming. So uh, if I were to say, uh, you know, let me jump into a blockchain right now and be ahead of the game, maybe, but then my commitments are going to be sort of further ahead and I'm trying to be pragmatic. Mm -hmm. Well, before we let you go, I got to give you uh, 30 seconds on your Yankees. Um, how do you feel about the season coming up? 
Uh, as for with every season, I'm super excited um, and I uh, can't wait until the season starts. We're, we're always excited when pitchers and catchers show That's up. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, nobody, well, if I were a Yankee fan, I'd be excited too, I must admit. That. Nobody's lost a game? Yeah, right. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Vitaly, thank you for being with us here. We thank appreciate it and uh, continued success at AMC thank you, Network. Thank you for having me. Back with more on theCUBE right after this. Oh,